What's up, ladies? This episode is brought to you by Vitamix. Who does not want to save time in the kitchen? You can also create healthier meals for your family and come up with really creative new ways to add in powerful greens and superfoods into your diet. If you're interested in checking it out, go to ewchannel.com forward slash Vitamix and you also get free shipping. So check it out. If you'd like to check out the show page for this particular episode that has everything we talk about, just go to ewchannel.com forward slash 10. Welcome to the Empowered Women's Channel Podcast, the home for vibrant living. Our goal every session is to inspire you with new and interesting ideas. Join us and let's change the planet together. So are you ready, Kate? I'm ready, Bo. Let's go! Hey, Kate, I am so excited today because we've got such a great guest in. We have Sheree in from thathippymom.com. And she also gives educational classes, which kind of are like reinventing health. And today she's going to talk to us all about essential oils. Hi, guys. Thanks so much for having me. Thanks I'm for being to here, be here. Sheree. We've been so excited all week. We've just been thrilled about this whole essential oil movement that's been going on. Very exciting. And I've been using essential oils for quite a while, but I don't quite know exactly how to use them as well as I probably should. And I'm really excited about getting an in-depth review from you about more about them. Yes, I can't wait to tell you all about it. Yeah, let's uh, let's start with what are essential oils? Just okay, well let's start with the very, very past history <laughs> that we know that essential oils were mankind's very first medicine. Uh, we can see on Egyptian hieroglyphics and Chinese manuscripts that priests and physicians have been using essential oils for thousands and thousands of years, which I find really exciting that we can go back to that and see what were they doing that we're missing out on right now. Um, so an essential oil, it's an aromatic compound that's found in plants and it's extracted using steam distillation or it's cold pressed. Um, the most effective form of natural medicine, I think, is an essential oil. Uh, it's 50 to 70 percent or 50 to 70 times more potent than an herb. So, for instance, if you were drinking a cup of peppermint tea, mm -hmm. which is medicinal and it's wonderful and it's very good for you, but you would have to drink 28 cups of peppermint tea to equal one single drop of peppermint oil. Oh, so gosh. that's how much more pot potent an oil is going to be. Wow. Yeah. Um, they're also, they're so small in molecular structure that they can enter the bloodstream in 30 seconds. Um, they're lipid soluble, which means that they're going to be able to penetrate the cell wall. This makes it um, able to be antibacterial. They're antiviral, antimicrobial, anti-parasitic, they're even anti-cancer. And my my most favorite oil of all time is frankincense because it is so anti-cancer. Um, it contains a component called a sesquiterpene. So it makes it able to penetrate the blood-brain barrier and it's gonna oxygenate your pituitary gland, your pineal gland. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's amazing for everything, for Alzheimer's, hormone imbalance, cancer fighting, anti-tumor. It's phenomenal. It's funny. It's so anti everything, but so pro life. Anti, everything. yeah, I know. It's Absolutely. like anti this, anti that. <laughs> yeah. But it's like pro health. I yeah, mean, that, that's kind of a um, what do you call that? Like a I'm <laughs> blanking on the word. Like it doesn't make any sense. It's kind of ironic or yeah, whatever. Yeah, ironic that it's anti everything bad, but it's pro everything good. I mean, it's the wonderful thing about it is um, it's not like. Uh, modern medicine which is synthetic mm. and it's every every modern medicine is going to have some kind of side effect and some of it's going to be can, can be catastrophic but with an essential oil there are zero side effects your body is going to utilize what it needs and then it's going to metabolize it like the rest of nutrients so they're completely safe which is wonderful are, are there some ty types of oils like you said nothing's going to hurt anybody but that are obviously more beneficial to some than others, obviously depending on their specific health needs and things yeah, like that. Yeah, it depends on your specific health needs. I mean, honestly, if I were to give every single person on the planet one oil, I would pick frankincense. Wow. That's, it's, uh, there's really nothing that frankincense isn't healing for. It's amazing. 
And also, like around children, are oils safe? Like to have around? Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. My kids, they they open up my little box of oils, and how about this, mom? Can I use this one? Absolutely. <laughs> little chemists in the kitchen. Yeah, oh, they totally yeah. are. Little yeah, box of treasures. <laughs> oh yes. The only thing you'd want to be careful of with kids is obviously you don't want to get it in your eyes. I'd say mm. that's really the only place to be careful about. And then some of them, like oregano oil, are going to be really potent, and I wouldn't put that like directly on. Um, like say their chest or mm. I, I would put it on the bottom of their feet or you can dilute with fractionated coconut oil. So that's another good way if it's a little bit too strong for your skin. But yes, they're, they're completely safe. Oh, amazing. Yeah. I guess the next thing we need to know is like, how, how can you use them? Cause I know there's lots of uses for oils. So, right. Well, there's three ways. The first way would be aromatically. Um, so you're inhaling the, the, the oil and it's going to affect your memory, your hormones and your emotions through your olfactory system. Um, it's also when you diffuse it in the air, it's killing airborne chemicals and viruses and bacteria. It's great for reducing fungus and mold in your home. Um, it's great if someone in your family is sick and you want to make sure that you're purifying the air in your house mm -hmm. to diffuse it. And it's going to kill all kind of the airborne uh, viruses and bacteria. You could put a drop in your hand and just cup it over your nose and your mouth and breathe it in. That's another great way to use it aromatically. Mm. Um, the next way would be topically, which um, I would say the most porous areas on your body will be your feet, your wrists, and the back of your ears. So this is going to be in your bloodstream within 30 seconds. And... Um, Especially on your feet, if you're sensitive to um, some of the stronger oils like clove or oregano, uh, the feet is a great place to put it because it's not going to burn. Um, but it's great to learn even the reflex points in your body, on your feet, on your hands, on your ears that correlate with different organs in your body. You can use that. And you could also put it right on top of like if you have a stomach ache and you want to rub fennel right on your stomach, you can do that. You could put it on the area of concern. Um, the third way would be internally. Now, you only want to use pure therapeutic grade essential oils for internal consumption. Yeah, I've heard a lot about that. It's really, really, careful, really important. You? Yeah, because a lot of oils on the market are going to have some harmful chemicals. So you want to make sure that you know for sure that you can put this oil in your body. But I, I buy um, just empty capsules and I'll fill them with frankincense, clove, oregano oil, a bunch of antioxidant ones and take them kind of as a supplement. Um, you can put a drop under your tongue. You can even cook with them. I cook with cilantro, with lime, with uh, lemon. Um, I love to put a drop of lemon oil in a, a nice hot cup of water first thing in the morning to kind of rehydrate and, and cleanse my kidneys first thing when I wake up. Are you, in your opinion, are you getting more of a benefit from that drop of oil versus like if you were to squeeze a whole lemon and juice it? Absolutely. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Because it it's the oil that's coming from the rind. Right. Um, and, and lemon is great. I mean, sometimes I'll squeeze a lemon and put the lemon oil in it. Mm -hmm. But like I said, kind of with the with the peppermint tea of it being so much more potent, mm -hmm. um, you know, one drop of lemon oil is probably the juicer or I'm sorry, the essential oil out of 20 lemons. So you're getting wow. that much more benefit from the oil. So yeah, so those are the three really great ways to use them. Um, I also, I've read quite a bit about, you know, having carrier, like carriers like sweet almond oil, mm -hmm. or mixing them with coconut to use them as a body moisturizer. Absolutely. Because you're saying, you know, you can put them straight on your skin. Is mm -hmm. that something that you can do? And can you mix other oils yeah. together? With yeah, yeah. And make a blend. Absolutely. It's fun. I mean, I make, um, Gosh, I make a blend for my deodorant. I make a blend for my face that I spritz on. Um, I make um, with coconut oil. I'll blend in grapefruit and cypress, which are anti-cellulite, and I'll put a little blender Ooh. in it and whip it together. And like, there's your <laughs> well, lotion. Sign me up. Where do I get that? I know, that, ladies. I should take a before Every and woman after, wants right? No, you should. Have you seen visible results? Yeah, it it really. I mean, they are potent. They really, really work. But making things with them is really great. I mean, I make, uh, I make dish soap with it. I make a wow. counter cleaner with, um, with lemon and tea tree. You can make laundry detergent. You can make perfumes and there's so many wonderful things that you can do with them. 
So basically, your home always smells like a day spa. Pretty much, every room has a different scent. I mean, it's being diffused, it's being sprayed. (laughs) They're everywhere, (laughs) and that's just like helping us go chemical free. Absolutely, yeah, and and even just cutting down the cost of Mm. you know you're trying to find chemical free products, but it's I'm all about empowering people, and not only are you empowering your health. But you're also empowering yourself financially to be able to make your own products. Yeah. You know, you can make your your cleaning solutions and they, they're really a wonderful tool even to use in your laundry. So it really is that little goes a long way. I mean, Absolutely. I can imagine a little bottle of oil, even if you're using it daily, is going to last quite a while. Yeah. Um, the, the size bottles that I have are about 15 milliliters. And the ones that I use on a daily basis, like say like a lavender, we'll use every night for, mm. to, to help sleep and we'll diffuse it. And I'd say one of those bottles lasts me about three months. So yeah, oh, they, they do last wild. quite a while. A little, they're very potent. A little goes a long way. Here's a question for the ladies out there, because I know when I take baths, I enjoy you know dropping some drops of lavender oil in there. Mm-hmm. I've realized if I do too many... Kind of irritates your little lady parts going on. Have you ever, um, mm. do you know anything about being careful with those oils in our waters that we're saturating, like basically yeah, marinating? I mean, in? I would say, gosh, I'd say you'd be good with between five to 10 drops. You should be, should be pretty solid with that. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess I it depends overzealous on the, for a while. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You don't want to like douse yourself with it. <laughs> yeah. Cause that was funny. It seems so medicinal and so calming. And then I realized when I kind of went a little overboard, it did the opposite, right? I almost feel like a little bit of a burning or a little a burning. So I think yeah. we have to listen to our bodies too, about what might be that point that you reach that. That's yeah, enough, definitely. You know? Yeah. Really, really tuning into that. Right. So I'm sure everyone's a little different. Everybody's skin has a different sensitivity level. So if you find your skin is more sensitive, you can just dilute it with fractionated coconut oil or the sweet almond oil. Mm. There are a lot of different ways you can dilute it and still get all the benefits without any kind of skin irritation. Good to know. Good to know. Thank <laughs> you. Also, um, I know as well, like with the lavender, as you mentioned, I know if I have between like five and six drops, you know, that puts me into a nice calming state. Mm-hmm. But then if I put in like 10 in my oil burner, it just wakes me up. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Have you, is that something, you know, with the oils that they have, you know, the potency of it, they can change your mood and definitely. different things like that? Yes, they're definitely mood altering for sure. Um, and I mean, there's some great blends where there's one called Balance, which is a grounding blend. And, you know, they take all the different oils that are going to have that emotional effect on you and blend it together. And it's, you know, first thing in the morning, if you're like me and you're, not a <laughs> not a happy camper in the morning, <laughs> which I'm sure a lot of people want. <laughs> yeah, to put some balance on or some um, some wild orange oil is great as well. Yeah, they're very um, emotionally calming, and then also they can be stimulating if you need a good like wake up in the morning. You can put on some peppermint or some grapefruit. Mm. Um, they're great for emotional trauma too. There's some that are gonna um, help you release emotional trauma. There's vetiver, um, helichrysum. There's a lot of really great oils that they really do affect your emotions and really help you process in a healthy way, which is amazing. Imagine also, if you take that to the, another level about women, you know, giving birth, imagine mm-hmm. surrounding yourself in the power mm-hmm. of having those oils around you to really help your neuro, you know, your, your nerves calm down, your neuro system kind of take a chill pill and yes. just be able to really you know, have a, a situation that could otherwise be probably a little bit more stressful. Than, yeah. Mm-hmm. Smell is so powerful. Oils are wonderful to use during birth, um, diffusing them, using them topically. It, it really, really is beneficial. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And would you also think like, say if I, if I was studying, you know, as a student, um, would oils help me to like focus, you yes. know, when I'm studying? Mm-hmm. Are there certain ones for that? Yes. Peppermint is a great one. Peppermint's going to open your mind up. It's going to wake you up. Frankincense is another great one for that too. They're, they're, they're mind openers. I mean, they they help, um, you have, they help you focus. They help with clarity. It's, it's really great. I mean, I would recommend oils for students from kindergarten on up to college to, you know, I put some peppermint on my kids. In fact, my second grader said, mom, I have some SATs today. Could you put some peppermint on me? Cause I really oh. want to do well. And I know I need to wake up and open up my mind. So oh my she put on gosh. peppermint this morning. Oh. So it really does work. Yeah, It's fun oh. to see even your child, see the benefits of it and the power of it, where it's just, it's become a natural 
daily habit, you know? Well, and you know, what's funny too, is I realized, you know, with my husband, it's like, you wouldn't think that men would be all into oils, but the minute you kind of introduce them to something, Mm -hmm. they go, what is that? Then it's like, they start wanting using it, you know, I'll I'll see, I'll see sometimes, you know, like there's a little bit of oil in in the bath that there was, you know, a shower taking the steam or, you know, something where I'm like, Oh, who would have known the men in our lives (laughs) would start loving these things. And that's the thing with oils. It's you have to experience them. I mean, I promise you every person that I've given either a sample or, you know, just given them some product and said, try this, everyone comes up with their own testimony. You experience it and you really see the life changing benefits and you get so excited that, I I mean, you just get hooked. That's how it happened for me. A friend sent me a sample and I was like, oh my gosh, this totally works. I can't get enough of it. And I, I was hooked from then on. Well, I have to say, I've known you for what, 15 years we've been friends Yeah, and I've never seen you so lit up about something. And I knew when you first got into yeah. interested in this stuff, I mean, you literally, your face lights up. Definitely. So exciting to be so passionate and to see in your own life how this has transpired and transformed Absolutely. your family. Yeah. I mean, natural health is just, it's so exciting to feel empowered in your own life, to feel like you know, you come to the realization that you really steer your own ship Mm. and you have to take responsibility for your health. And the more you learn and the more empowered you get, the more excited you get. And so when I discovered essential oils and how they just totally enhanced the benefits of everything else that I was already doing, it it just got me so excited. I mean, I can't, I, I really, I don't stop talking about them <laughs> You're ever. You're so giddy. You smile. I love it. That's how it should be. When you, when you see something, when you love the idea and then also see obviously that it works. Yeah. That's what lights me up too. So I can see how you're so passionate when you're actually seeing the difference in your, in your own life. Yeah. And you you can't help but want to share it with the world. Absolutely. I just got like tingles running all up my arm. (laughs) I do too. Oh, well, you know, and for people who are listening at the moment, like I know if I was listening to this podcast, I'd be like really exciting, really excited and wanting to go out and get essential oils. And I just want to go back to the question like that we talked about earlier on, you know, the potency and like how long they last and where they come from. And it's, you know, because I know that some oils are more expensive than others. Could you maybe just touch on that? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it is really, it's really all about quality. How they're made is critical. And, um, you know, just talking about the price of the oils, um, Producing pure quality oils can be expensive. You know, for instance, one pound of pure Melissa will sell for like $9,000 to $15,000. Wow. Um, but it takes thousands and thousands of pounds of this flour to produce one pound of essential oil. So you you kind of get the correlation of like, it takes a lot of the material to make the oil, which is what makes them expensive but you're also, they're so potent that you need one single drop. Yeah. Mm. And I, I've actually, I have tried, you know, in the last about two years, just experimented with a lot of different brands to see what is the most pure. And, you know, cause I think when you're putting something on your skin, that's so small and molecular structure, you know, I mean, it's penetrating your cell wall. You want to make sure that there's absolutely no chemicals no impurities attached to that that you're bringing into your body. So purity is really, really key. Um, I found a company called doTERRA that they go a step beyond and they have established what is called um, the therapeutic uh, grade pure essential oils. I'm sorry, certified pure therapeutic grade. And this is going a step beyond organic. So what they're doing is they're obtaining oils Um, from organic farmers that they're selecting, they're training, they're monitoring from all over the world, which I find this part really exciting. So Mm -hmm. for instance, the lavender is going to be harvested from France and the frankincense is going to be harvested from Oman. And so what's happening is you're getting the oils from the land that they're indigenous to, which is going to make them that much more potent. Um, and then they go a step beyond that and they do third party testing where they're going to take every single batch and send it into two independent labs to be tested for any kind of synthetics, impurities, chemicals. And if there's a trace of anything, the batch gets thrown out. It's a hundred percent pure. So for me, I feel really safe taking those internally because I know exactly what I'm putting in my body. 
Um, and I, you know, I think that's a really important thing to know what, what you're putting in your body. I agree. And where do you ever hear about a third party, you know, testing? It's always like we have our own product. We make it in our backyard or we test it ourselves. You're not going to get that real, you know, solid scientific testing. And I feel like the integrity of that is just so huge to say, look, we trust so much what we're putting out there on the market that we even we want to put it through third party testing and send it to independent labs that will give us an honest, true answer. Um, I just feel that's really integrous. And I, I feel like I can trust that kind of company. That's really important. And so say if I was starting out and I bought some lavender oil mm-hmm. and, you know, it was really good quality, mm-hmm. but I don't use it all the time. Like how long would you think that bottle of if it was, you know, the quality and the purity of, of it was you know, really strong and mm-hmm. everything. How long do you think that would have a shelf life for? Oh, wow. Their shelf life can last indefinitely. I mean, you can have that bottle of oil for years and years and years, but I guarantee you, you're going to be so excited about it that it's <laughs> going to be gone in like three or four months. <laughs> but they really, they really do last. I mean, they're never going to go bad to the degree that they're harmful. Mm. I would say if you're exposing it to high heat, it's going to lose some of the potency, mm-hmm. but it's never going to go bad like if you had, you know, something, some piece of fruit sitting on the <laughs> counter. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's not going to rot. <laughs> Unless it's a marshmallow peep, because everyone knows those That's last true. For thousands of years. For a Twinkie, <laughs> yes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's just wrong. I'd rather take lavender and I know. hope for the best. What would happen if you put lavender on a Twinkie, though? Oh. Then how long would it last? I think we have a new business venture. <laughs> what are you thinking, Cherie? <laughs> Lavender Twinkies by Cherie Ball. Totally. Because <laughs> we're all about health, you know. <laughs> I love it. Well, I'm trying to think. What else? What other questions should we ask Cherie while we got her on the spot? Mm. Um, maybe for someone starting out, what are like five top oils you might recommend Ooh. that they look into yeah. for everyday use? Okay. I'll tell you what I use every day. Um, I use I use lemon oil every morning in my hot water. I love lemon. Um, I use lavender every evening. I use peppermint oil, which it's a great, like we said, to kind of wake you up and get you thinking. Mm-hmm. And it's also really great because I don't like to chew gum or have breath mints. Mm. And so I just have a little vial in my purse and it's Ooh. my breath freshener. Can you smell me from over there? <laughs> You're <laughs> smelling very fresh. Very, Thank you. Very wintry. You. <laughs> that is actually a really good call though because yeah. a lot of people are steering away from things obviously like gum with aspartame mm-hmm. and full of chemicals. Absolutely. You don't know what's, what's in, in it. Them. Right. Or it's just sugar. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I also use frankincense. I mm-hmm. think... Um, it, Honestly, it's just one of the most powerful and amazing ones. I put a drop under my tongue every morning or I put um, I put a drop between my eyebrows to kind of uh, oxygenate the pituitary gland. It's really hormonally balancing. Um, Let's see. Another one I love would be uh, I blend clove and wild orange together because those are really powerful antioxidants. I put that on either my kids wrists or the bottom of their feet every morning. Mm -hmm. So when they go out and are exposed to germs all day, I know that their body is fighting um, off those viruses, that the Mm -hmm. clove is penetrating into the cell wall. And if they're exposed to the virus, it's breaking down the protein membrane around that virus so it can't duplicate itself. So that's, I call that the protective blend. Like I think prevention is key. That's so important. So important for moms to know that. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. These are such affordable ways on any budget to come up with ways to protect your family. Cause I had a client for years who, this is so sad, but she literally made her son go to school with that hand sanitizer yes. and she used it so much. Cause she, she yeah. basically like scared him into it. He ended up having a skin condition where uh, his hands couldn't recover. Yeah. Just trying to keep her kid healthy and do the right thing. Her intention was good. Right. It ends up ruining him. They so. carry him in the classroom now. Every time my children walk into that classroom, they're required to put a squirt on wow. their hand. Required. Yeah. See, now that's just in not the natural. So you probably no. feel so good sending your little girls out with a defense against the germ world. Yeah. I even keep a little them. spray bottle in my car of, I put, you know, filtered pure water in it and then I fill it up with... Um, tea tree oil or clove or wild orange. I do a mix of stuff that's antibacterial. So anywhere we go, you know, you're, you're at Target and you want to, you want to make sure that your shopping cart isn't <laughs> covered in germs and boogers and whatever. I 
spritz that thing down. <laughs> and and also your children would smell like citrus. Absolutely, <laughs> they smell so good. Little tangerines walking around. You just want to, <laughs> just want to eat them. Yes. Ah, well, for me as well, I do a lot of travel. So Mm -hmm. uh, there's some oils you can recommend for me. Yes. In fact, my husband just left. He travels. He left on tour this morning. And I said, okay, we need to make you some bottles to put in your backpack. So I make him take frankincense with him because... I talk about frankincense a mm. lot. I mean, if it's good enough for baby Jesus, it's good enough for me, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so he takes that with him everywhere he goes. And then um, the On Guard blend, which I was telling you about, that's um, the clove and the wild orange. It also has eucalyptus, which is the protective blend. Take that, especially because, you know, he's sleeping on a tour bus with a bunch of dirty guys who who knows what kind of germs <laughs> are on there. So that, And if you're flying, that's another mm. great thing. You're exposed, you know, you're in yeah. this... Tin can. Closed in, you know, <laughs> place and someone's coughing behind you. And yeah, you want to have that. And then there's also um, a blend called Serenity. That's lavender, Roman chamomile, marjoram. It's like, it'll knock you out. It's amazing. I, when I take that before I sleep, I literally, like, I think I'm dead to the world for eight or nine hours. Like, I'll wake up in the same position. You you sleep so well. So I definitely recommend that if you're traveling, especially if if you're going into a different time zone, to just really help you reset your body clock and relax and and really have a deep sleep. Because that, I mean, that's important to your health, too, Mm. is to have really good sleep. So those would be my my travel recommendations. Mm -hmm. And when you're talking about all these different blends and things mm-hmm. like that, I'm sure this is just a silly question, but there, it seems like with essential oils, there would be no wrong blend. Like you can't, have you heard of any blends that are particular, like you can't blend one oil with another? Right. Because with yeah. chemicals and stuff, oh, watch out for bleach and ammonia. Right. I mean, it seems exactly. Like you would come up against that, would yeah. you? Yeah. You're not, you're not going to have that issue with essential oils. There are some that their, their chemical constituents are going to work better with each other and complement each other more. But I just kind of blend whatever I like that smells good together. And I know that it's not it's not going to counterbalance or throw off the other one and it's not going to be harmful. Yeah, you can just blend away. <laughs> so you use your women's intuition. I do. <laughs> That's right. Perhaps your empowered women's mm. intuition. <laughs> Why, yes, I do. <laughs> Well, I have one last question yeah. for you. So when storing oils and keeping them, like mm-hmm. I know, I don't know, are they okay in direct sunlight? Should I keep them in a cupboard? Like how, how do you go yeah, about that? I would recommend not having them in direct sunlight. In fact, the, the bottles that the oils come in are the amber vials that are dark because you don't want direct sunlight on your oils. Any kind of heat is going to um, – cut down on the potency of the oil and you want to get your money's worth for these things. So I store them in, um, I have a little box, wooden box that I have on my countertop that I put them in. And then in my purse, I keep them in a little, um, you know, Ziploc case that's padded. Um, yeah. So you want to keep them just how you would probably store your vitamins or your supplements. You want to put them somewhere that's not right in direct heat or like maybe right, not right by your stove or something. Yeah, that makes sense. I've I've learned a lot in the past few years about not only keeping things in dark containers if mm-hmm. you want them to not be reduced, like you said, reduced down, right. but just the, the the purity. I mean, obviously, people who are buying oils in, whether it's an olive oil or cooking with or whether it's an essential oil, if you're right. buying it from a plastic container in a light bottle, exactly. it just doesn't make much sense, does it, as we right. learn more about how, to, how these oils keep. and Definitely. Wow. Yeah. I mean, wow. even if you're making, like I've talked about some of the sprays that I make, you want to make sure that they're in an amber glass vial to keep keep the potency of the oil. Yeah, you definitely want to keep it protected. Well, thank you, Cherie. That Absolutely. Was, oh, my gosh. That was so much information, and that was amazing. Thank and you. And that's just taken my essential oil knowledge to a whole new level. Awesome. And I can't wait to use some of them. And yes. I also can't wait. Um, you're actually going to be contributing to our blog Absolutely. and our website and, you know, kind of putting out this great information for women yeah. so that, you know, we, we can we can get this information out there and start living more chemical-free lives. That's right. Yeah. Very excited. Yeah, our essential oil go-to girl. And I also, <laughs> so if people want to buy these oils, obviously, through our site, we'll have a link and you guys can um, hook up and look under our, our store page and uh, check those oils out if you're interested and Obviously, Cherie, if you could leave people with one last uh, 
personal favorite, I guess it would be frankincense. <laughs> I know. You really want me to talk about frankincense again? <laughs> <laughs> but people, I don't, whatever they start with, it's obviously just getting their hands in it and playing with it and not absolutely. being afraid. There's nothing no wrong afraid way of to oils. do it. Yeah, absolutely. And any of the links to anything we've talked today on the podcast will be um, below and, you know, they'll all be on our website. And if you want to get contact of Cherie or have any questions you want to ask, she's going to be doing a series of blogs for us. And, you know, feel free because she'll be there to answer any questions and maybe even give some one-on-one sessions Absolutely. with you. Absolutely. Yeah. Love that. Yeah. Because I think this information really needs to get out there. Definitely. You know, it's just a better way of living. And how amazing are they? You can use them for... Everything from cooking yes. to travel sickness for your children to cleaning products. I mean, wow. Yeah, every wow. aspect of your life, yeah. for sure. Oh, thank you, Cherise, so thank much. You. This was such a great time. Time flies by when you're having fun, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we'll catch you guys on the next episode and have a great day wherever you are in the world. With grateful hearts, we thank you for joining this session of our Empowered Women's Channel podcast. We wish you an inspired day ahead wherever you are in the world. Remember to sign up for our newsletter at empoweredwomenschannel.com forward slash subscribe. Instantly receive our fabulous free gift to you that you gals don't want to miss out on. I think you'll like this one. All right. Because you like dinosaurs. I, okay. <laughs> <laughs> sure. What do you get when you cross a Tyrannosaurus Rex with fireworks? Oh, gosh. I don't know. Dynamite. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you think I like dinosaurs anyway? Because you made us go to that dinosaur park. Yeah, that was random. I didn't drag you into it. You seem to like them just as much as I did. That is very fitting. I know. All right. I think we should post a picture of us in the dinosaur yeah, we totally should. All right. Yeah. Rawr. Rawr. <laughs> we are not held responsible, liable in any way, shape, or form for extreme transformation or empowerment in your lives upon participating in the Empowered Women's Network. Random acts of kindness and spontaneous desire to make the world a better place is completely your own doing. Feelings of wanting to throw around pixie dust and free the unicorns have been reported, and we cannot take credit in any way, shape, or form for this unpredictable outburst, either now or in the future days ahead. Sporting a random fake beard and wanting to take selfies in random places while sporting it are completely your own doing. The laughter that follows doing that very act is contagious, so watch out. The shift that may take place from pessimism to a glass very overflowing has been reported, as well as sudden desires to bust into radical dance moves and singing at the top of your lungs. Set an overwhelming need to greet others in public places such as railway systems and crosswalks, with giant smiles and compliments are encouraged, as well as appreciated. The future effects of kindness and other such behavior towards strangers might possibly not be seen or even known in this lifetime, although the magical effects they have on others' lives is astounding. Only love at your own risk and in your own way, shape, or form, regardless of what others may think or judge. Be advised and know that you and you alone are solely, completely, inequivocally, 111% responsible for being a world changer. No excuses or late notes from mom and dad will be tolerated at this point in time. No material on this blog is intended to suggest that you should not seek professional medical care. Always work with qualified medical professionals, even if you educate yourself in the field of live food, nutrition, and alternative medicine. I'm not a doctor, nor am I offering readers medical advice of any kind. None of the information offered here should be interpreted as a diagnosis of any disease, nor an attempt to treat or prevent any disease or condition. While information in this blog is discussed in the context of numerous conditions, it can be dangerous to take action based on any information in this blog or to start any health program without first consulting a health professional. The content found here is for informational purposes only and is in no way intended as medical advice, as a substitute for medical counseling, or as a treatment slash cure for any disease or health condition, and nor should it be continued as such. Always work with a qualified healthcare professional before making any changes to your diet, prescription drug use, lifestyle, or exercise activities. This information is provided as is, and the reader slash viewer assumes all risks from the use, non-use, or misuse of this information.